Okay. Well, I can hear you. Can you Hello. hear me? Can you... <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is always... This is always the adventure of sound on the Dungeon Cooldown. Woo! Happy Monday, friends! Hey. Uh, welcome to the Dungeon Cooldown. Uh, I'm I'm Morgan Peter Brown, as you know, and uh, with me is Ron Ogden. And with us today is our amazing special guest, Mr. Michael Sinclair II. Woohoo! You may know Woo. his you may know him as Ambrose. Wait, was it Gesimus or Jessimus? Jessimus. Jessimus. How could I forget? Of course, Ambrose Jessimus from a town called Ricochet, or a myriad of other things. Michael, thank you for being here. We are a fan of yours, and we love that you're here. So thank you so much. And thanks for, for joining us on this. So this is our Dungeon Cooldown for the first timers. Uh, this is our companion show to all things The Dungeon Run, brought to you by our amazing Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash The Dungeon Run. If you haven't uh, if you haven't already, we are offering so much cool... Ron, you're jumping all over the screen. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I also have a very large noggin. Um, but yes, uh, yes, yeah. Oh, oh, Ron's muted also, apparently. Ron's but, muted? What? Uh, he, he was you saying- go to the he, streamer mic. Ron was talking about how large his head yeah, is. Yeah, he said he has to always be the largest head in the room because he's yeah, a that, Sigma male. That's, that's what whoa. <laughs> Sig Sigma male, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh go to go to the streamer microphone thing i think it's i mean i'm hearing you great me too uh we'll see no nope, you they hear... can't can you How about hear now can wrong? you hear me now Yes, yes, okay. we can hear you so now. There we are. If someone <laughs> clicks the view button and turns it off, it still tells you that sound's coming out, but you don't but you don't get it. So yeah, that's yeah. What's going whatever. On. Sorry, uh, about whatever. That. Whatever OBS. No, get <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, welcome back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is our wonderful companion show where we, you know, chat with all of you, answer questions, and kind of talk about what what happened in the last week and also what's coming up. Um, yeah, also what's going on on the Patreon. Let's see. Uh, as we talked about, we just released the second episode of Arcane Artistry. Um, we have some very cool merch discounts coming up and even more cool things. But right now, today, yeah, we just wanted to... We had such an amazing time with the finale of A Town Called Ricochet last Wednesday. Ron, again, standing O. Well done. I these, these, These short one-shot, two-shots are are so tricky um like i i've done so many charity streams with like jasper's game day and other things like that i'm sure we've all done them at this point they're so much fun but literally i have i've never dm'd one and i i watch i i often just like shake my head watching the dm try to go like um i'm just throwing things away at this point yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Um, yeah, well, that's not I, gonna work because I don't have enough time. So moving on, <laughs> I did, I did one, I did one with with Tanya to pass Cypher of Tear, who's who's uh, oh, you're yeah. familiar with as well, Michael, I'm sure, and uh, and where it was, it was her infernal goose chase one shot that she did oh, for. Yeah. And I, I've never seen a DM put her head in her hands more. <laughs> like, <'cause laughs> we were just going like, yeah, I'm just gonna steal that, and she's like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like I was at a, a thing last night in Seattle and we were talking about that, the infernal thing. And yeah, like anytime you get Tanya and go like, okay, like you're like, <laughs> all right, what did I do? What's gonna happen? When Tanya gives you that side eye, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so true. Which is actually why we like doing two shots, actually, because so much of the fun. And again, I, I think we said it on Wednesday, but and and I and I genuinely mean it is is I loved the chemistry of this table immediately of the of the five players and Ron together and you and Erica were both so wonderful and so game and and uh and you know to jump into our brand of craziness and if it was just a one shot we. Like stuff like poor spears probably doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, like all of our favorite stuff like just doesn't happen because you're just burning through plot at that point. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and so two shots at least give us a chance to meet the characters and learn something about the characters. And you got, I, 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 I guess I can't. I'm used to not being able to watch other people's secret rooms, but I guess now, now that that Ricochet is is complete for the moment, that we can that I can go back and watch Ambrose's secret rooms with uh, with Anya because. But you know, I was I was really happy that you got moments to like really develop your character, and Erica got so many cool moments, and and just learning all these things. Jared, I I had to remind myself multiple times that despite how they sounded, that Jared and Katie were playing GIF because <laughs> they sounded just like these just good old country bumpkins, like harmless country bumpkins, and you're like. Yeah, but remember, they're weird-looking alien people yeah. from other from other dimensions. And <laughs> right. So when yeah. when Jared indicated that he and Katie were going to play it, I panicked at first. I was like, "Oh, well, I don't know how aliens fit into Wild West." And then I was like, "Oh, right, cowboys versus aliens." Cowboys and aliens, <laughs> which is right. which is immediately what Jared's response was. I don't need to panic. That's totally not necessary. <laughs> yeah. But um, but have you is Ambrose a character that you've played before, Michael, or or is or did you? Because I know you're a fan of the Warlocks, much as I am. You and I have talked about this in the past. Yes. Um. So, but 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 Ambrose was a first was a first time build for you. Yeah. Um. I, he was he showed up so fully formed and such such a beautiful uh, such a beautiful like silhouette and 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 visual idea of a character that I was like okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. I built him for this thing. Uh, yeah. I don't think I really reuse many any of my characters even for one shots. Um, and it's not like I'm one of those uh, TTRPG folks who have like a backlog of all these characters they've always wanted right. to play and like, you know, their D20 or, you know, their D&D Beyond is like full of like six pages of characters. It's like, I always try and curtail it for what I'm doing. So like I nice. always build it from the get go. And then um, it's just the how I feel like I build characters. I always, like I talked to other folks about this of like I always try and marry mechanics with like role playing and background. Yeah. And so it's easier to like put a performance on or play a character or step into that character's shoes, especially with all the spells they're doing X Y Z. It just really flows. And so I always build it from the ground up in that way. So that's kind of how Ambrose came to being. Um, yeah, I'm I I targeted uh each of our players before they made their characters that they needed to include a uh unjust event uh in their backgrounds. Right. Uh, somewhere where they experienced some sort of crime or violation and the perpetrator got away. And so what I right. got back from Michael uh was incredible. Um yes. and when I got that I realized, okay, um I think it's going to be very extremely um it's going to be it's going to be that uh, Michael's going to have a, a lot to do with this. Uh, and he gave me his patron was so such an interesting um, aspect of his character, uh, which I love about warlocks that I was like, okay, I got to use this. So. And it felt very Western too. That was, it, there was something about it that, that, that did feel like it fit um, yeah. our, our story so well. That was really cool. And, and kudos for that. This yeah. is actually a good question. I see in chat from rabbit attack goat, mm -hmm. Michael, how much did you know did you did did Ron give you any sort of warning when he pulled out that voice on your? So that was <laughs> that was pure like whoa. Okay, here we go. <laughs> he was, so Ron did some audio like obviously audio is important on a dungeon run. We always try and square away audio. Someone in chat sure. said, "Why don't you guys test audio before we come on?" Like that does happen. <laughs> but uh, so before he did that, uh, he was doing some testing. But I had no idea I was going to deal with like my 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 matron in the in the game, um, and then the fully fleshed character of how that all started. Ron only picked up with what he knew that I gave him um which wasn't a bunch like I kind of set the scene of how I acquired my patron and who that or matron and who that matron was before I was around to because they're a matron of other warlocks like you never usually get to meet it's kind of funny actually for like warlocks you rarely meet other warlocks who have your same like matron or patron like that never really happens yep oh in god case, it'd be a nightmare <laughs> yeah, and, and in this case, like that didn't really happen, but I knew who was part of their like the coven of of, of warlocks and stuff. But that's all the information I gave Ron and Ron ran ran it, and ran it, with it. Yeah, it'd be kind of like discovering your parent had a secret family or something like yeah. that. You're like, yeah, Wait a minute, you mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. How many spell slots do you have? <laughs> well, and I really enjoyed the way that you guys role played it because it was you know there was some like indication that the party knew. 
but it hadn't really been discussed among characters or about like how detailed they are or how much power they're being given. So I really enjoyed that and how Michael kind of uh, his character threw off some of the lines of questioning. I really loved that. And it gave it, it really, in my opinion, gave me even more to work with going forward from that moment. So. It was funny the different ways the adventure could have gone where because uh, uh, Jedediah sowed some sowed some discord and some di or tried to sow some discord and distrust among the party last session was like Ambrose is gonna betray you and I and, and my character immediately was like no I don't believe you I love Ambrose <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I didn't and there, that but I believe it no, I was like, and I'm like bull crap don't buy it for a second you know we got we didn't How have a whole you? bunch of time to get into like why Jedediah <laughs> did that or why his reasoning behind all of that but right. some of it was because he had experience with another warlock of the same <laughs> patron so uh that's where a lot of his uh his Un, uh, untrustworthiness of Ambrose came from uh, yeah. more of like I know who the patron is and I don't trust anyone who has them as a patron yeah. uh, this is actually uh, this, this kind of ties into all of this and this is also from Ra Rabbit Attack Code from the Patreon this two shot was absolutely awesome and I enjoyed every moment thank you uh, Ron on a scale of perfect ending to complete oh. disaster <laughs> how well would you say the players managed to wrap up the events of a town called Ricochet uh, I think the players did a great job I think they awesome. did probably a nine uh, Ron did not wrap that up as oh. well as he wanted to as well as he wanted to um, okay. there were some other things there that uh, that and 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 Jeff has talked about this with us before, which is like sometimes in the moment you're so focused on what's going on that you forget all the candy that you like. Oh, I'm going to sprinkle this in so they get a little bit of that right. sweetness. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, in the moment, sometimes you just forget it. Uh, so yeah. uh, there was more to that ending that I thought would have just made it made it perfect for my own personal uh, wants and needs. Uh, but I'm still happy with what what went down, and I'm glad that everybody enjoyed themselves. But I feel like those, I feel like two shots or, or one shots can go that way as well. And you, you can either go really simple, like linear A to B, or or you can do what you did, and I almost prefer this, where you are getting the sense of that much larger world and there's stories that are untold about this that you're kind of left with questions. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love that personally. Well, I, and I, 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 I like targeted still that being purpose. able to think about, yeah. Yeah. Because... Uh, and, and Heather can tell you about it. Uh, so much of my prep was, okay, how much of this do I include because right. it, it's necessary for the story? And how much of it do I leave out because it's just too much exposition and it's going right. to ruin what you're trying to tell? Um, right. So I was talking to Michael a little bit. Like this whole two shot, when as I created it, is more of a the first in a series of two shots. That's mm -hmm. the way I looked at it, as this Very is just cool. the entry and the intro into what more could be in the savagery. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and you absolutely feel that. It's it's um, every, it, almost every new aspect you introduced, it, it just felt like we were scratching the surface of that yeah. and going like, what else is there? You know? Yeah, one yeah. of the moments I was waiting for you guys to do, and even you, Morgan, kind of picked up on it. And you were like, "No, let's just go outside." Was when Jebediah, when Jebediah after you see him in his in his uh, in his uh, fervent form, uh, goes outside to the right, and there was a whole nother long mine area down to the left, and I did that on purpose. I did yeah. it on purpose because it gave me two different ways to end this thing, and it was like, "This is their option," and you guys went with the "Let's go." right instead of left and i was like okay cool that's a cool one i like that one let's do that one uh, well i so, i think yeah. i had totally missed that there were two ways to, that, that we that we were at like a literal fork in the road and then and then in one of the descriptions you're like so yeah there's two ways out of this and we're like wait a minute what wait, where's what? the other way <laughs> <laughs> well i just wanted one person to walk down that uh, down to the end of it just one of you i just want right. one of you to do it and it would have changed everything it would have changed it all, at least from the perspective of the players and what they understood and what their characters now understood of going on. So that was a we'll tiny never bit know. Of, now was a, I was very curious, but there was a tiny bit of metagaming me where I was like, 
I really don't want Michael to be just be alone for the rest of this. So let's let's hurry let's to meet up to with Michael. <laughs> I yes, it. yes, yeah, of course. Let's Which just... I also appreciate, but I had that prepared that if it was just me and Michael for that whole second shot until the very end, I was prepared for that. So oh no. <laughs> uh, and Michael, I got another good question here from Gateway Guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ambrose says to his patron, it's good to see you, baby. <laughs> uh, and this is kind of sort of a question for both of us. It's like, Morgan, why does James never speak to Shothrigot or Sloppy Goats like that? Maybe he needs he, maybe all he needs is a little TLC. Yeah. <laughs> I think every that's one of the beautiful things about about Warlocks is is that patron relationship, is that you know, is is sort of the built-in conflict and negotiation of that. And I think Ambrose really walked a really interesting line where it's this, you know, it was obvious that Anya was not not cool. <laughs> it's a lot of not cool stuff um, going on with, with Anya, but also like, but Ambrose seemed to try to charm her as best he could when, when he could. And uh, that that gave it a very interesting dynamic, and also made you very hard to read. Sometimes you're like, "Wait, are you so? Are you cool with this bad this bad thing?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, with that, um, I Ron specifically asked, like, "What is your relationship with your patron?" And I love that he asked that because there's not a lot of DMs who kind of start from there, like, uh, or ask that from the get go. So I was like, "Okay, I kind of like like I know my mate. I know my matron is obviously." Uh, a female presenting matron and i also knew that like all right if it's a ghost like you always think about like that banshee kind of s type of thing and like usually when that's involved like there's like this kind of like sickly sweet relationship kind of like dynamic echo of the happens. personality echo of the personality right and so and right like ghosts are, or apparitions are known to come into being because they're such a forceful thing so like all those things kind of came into play or else uh, I thought like, all right. And it's also somewhat Western of like, all right, I have this weird relationship with like a ghost that's like been helping me through like the wild West or X, Y, Z. So, um, I knew that it was going to be a very tension filled relationship between me and my, my patron, but there had to be like a little dance of like, do, does Ambrose like, uh, his patron? Do, do they get along? Do they like each other in like some sort of more than like warlock matron relationship and so putting it all together i think that's what do you like, like her through. do you do you like her like her <laughs> <laughs> well no, and that was that was one of the reasons why i asked um especially about a relationship with your patron because i think that's that's such a defining thing for a warlock um that it's kind of important as a dm to understand what your character what your player wants in that kind of relationship uh and so when um michael started telling me about it i was like okay i know enough uh to move forward with what i've got but i want to see what happens when we get into it and that was part of why the secret rooms went down <clears throat> is because i wanted him the opportunity to play that choice that he that he made uh and then for me to kind of improvise as we were uh, moving around and moving forward to figure that out. And so the first part of the two shot was very, very um, uh, informative in that way for me as a DM um, and interacting him uh, secretly as a player. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so much, there's so much good stuff. And, and I think to even go into some more of the, uh, of the backstory uh, I know uh, Jared and, and Katie got into got into a little bit sort of you know like they 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 were they were these gith that had escaped the Shadowfell basically and had been you know scarred as a result but then had come out of that very differently mm -hmm. <laughs> whereas whereas Katie's character had taken it to be so chaotic and just turned into the sort of uncaring the dynamic back and forth of her taking vengeance and him taking justice was hilarious and left to just so many natural conflicts. Of well, life. and I also love that she made that choice and she's like, no, I'm, I'm a gith on Rumspringa, but I'm yes. still very curious, right? She was very still much as a gith, like, oh, Sam, what do you think? How, how does this work in the wild west? You're a miner. Um, you know how this works. Like, uh, I really love that aspect of Katie. Uh, Katie's yeah. character. She she always brings that kind of um, bold choice into her characters. But then yeah, to have I don't know Jared if that ever came that... out. 
Yeah. I don't know if that ever came out in game, but it was yeah. one of my favorite things I've read recently, <laughs> where when describing her character to the rest of us, Katie said, she's basically a gif on Rumspringa. <laughs> that came yeah. out last uh, last cooldown. We talked about it a little oh, bit. Oh, did? It was it so did. funny. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was I like, really that's the it. funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> well, and and it's just, it it's funny, but it's also very, it's such a great description of a character that it made it, immediately I understood the character in my mind as a DM. Yes, yes. And I knew where to kind of place them. And, and uh, I was not surprised when she chose Vengeance. Uh, I was very proud of her when she ma made that choice. Uh, sure. Uh, especially for the character, because I thought that would fit really well. And I love that they both chose different ones. And that was just, uh, it was great. And Jared playing a cleric. I was just going to say that. Incredible. Incredible. J Jared, who normally, you know, Michael, you've watched, you've watched the dungeon run. <laughs> but, <laughs> thanks. Uh, but Jared, who is normally just the most cutthroat of a rogue I've ever played with. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has moments where he has like real room, you know, good and, and, and heroism and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But when Jared decides to just cut some throats, <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's over, <laughs> you know, you're like, whoa. <laughs> So watching him play a cleric um, was was really fascinating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I I thought he gave it such an interesting flavor and uh, and yeah, it was it was really cool. It was really um, good. It was, I was yeah. really impressed with his cleric. His cleric was, yeah. was really really good. Yep. Yeah, the tw I haven't played much with the Twilight clerics, but they they do have a couple of very cool things. Mm -hmm. The the flight in dim light or, or something like that was really the, cool. The, the the general concept of Twilight Quer cleric is really awesome to me as well. Where it's just mm -hmm. like you don't have to be afraid of the dark. The dark doesn't have to always have all the evil in it. It can be a right. place of comfort. Right. Uh, and I, as a person, I can reflect that. Like I, you know, the sun is great, but me. Nighttime has always been my natural, uh, of course, life, uh, and so there's some comfort in darkness for myself. Uh, and for so sure. it was. It, it's cool to see that kind of uh, that kind of uh, subclass come out. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like a like an undead warlock who, like you know, or, or twilight cleric, or maybe, or you could go dark elf or something like that if you wanted to. Someone, someone who you know couldn't really get into the light that much. I don't know. Fascinating. His cleric uh, had a. Uh, had a um who was the michael the man on little house on the prairie the lead who died uh, michael, michael landon landon it had a michael landon vibe to me to it to me and i i was into that like i realized highway at one to, point highway to heaven yeah highway gift. to heaven uh <laughs> and, yeah and, and for a little bit for me it was i got kind of like i re i forgot i was a dm because i was like Wow, this is cool cleric stuff that I love. Uh, so I had to remember, like, oh right, I can't. I have to. I have to run this thing. Like, I can't just <laughs> enjoy it like an audience member. Uh, so, but yeah, that I love, Jared. So, Jared, if you're watching, and I, I know you probably are, uh, thank you again for that. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just, I mean, Erica's Sam was <laughs> coming up with that that a herring gun killed her parents in such a brutal way. Mm. Was it was. It was sad, but then also darkly comedic because you're yeah. like, so a, a rabbit killed your mom and dad. <laughs> it was like, well, and what I loved oh, was uh, I, yeah, no, I, I tied it with Michael's background because Michael gave me some yes, so, some nice. info uh, about Taz, um, and then I just happened to be like, well, that's easy then. Now I can tie these two together. They don't even know, uh, right. and yeah, it was cool. That's a that's a great DM moment. You're like, oh, I'm going to use this. Yes, I'm you. going to. Well, and that's <laughs> look. If you're a DM and you're going to ask your players for things like, hey, find an unjust thing in your background and uh, those kind of things, you better use them. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, why'd I ask? <laughs> I've, I've said it before, but it's it's uh, playing playing a warlock specifically, but oftentimes giving your DM like backstory stuff on yourself is often like handing them a bag full of hand grenades. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, but that's that's the caveat of me. playing a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> hurt me uh -huh. <laughs> hey i want all this power but you're all i'm also gonna suffer for it yeah Dude, perfect it, it's so true and you also played i'm i've i i am one of those people you talked about earlier michael that i i do when i'm bored just create go on dnd beyond and just create new characters <laughs> yeah and and some i never use some uh, or and I I will go back and forth. I I have one shot characters and then I have like oh this is someone that I feel like I could there's a real journey here that I could see and that this would be their conflict or their arc or maybe things they would try to try to do and you have no idea where it would take them. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I've never I've never played an Undying Warlock, and this is uh, but but I've always really liked I like the the mechanics of it a lot. I think Undying I feel like Undying Warlocks got a little bit forgotten in the undead warlock in the new undead warlock subclass everyone's like ooh undead 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 everybody rushed undead and i was like oh, undying warlocks is still pretty cool undying is pretty <laughs> cool i i don't remember is undying which one's the one that you get health points for killing a thing is that i think that's fiend very good is that fiend i think I that's think so where you I get think... temp hp whenever you drop something to zero hit points it must be something I, it's either undying or the undead one but either yeah. way like a really spicy one that i've made that i i actually want to replay at some point is you can do the uh blood hunter kind of character and your blood hunter could have a patron and so i made like a a blood hunter um what was Whoa. this a blood hunter asimar which was the scourge one so they like they do themselves damage to output more damage and they're blood hunters. So they already have that. But then when you're like this undying warlock or whichever it ones that gets health points. So you're kind of like this super aggro, <laughs> right. like get in there, smash all the things and try and like get health back faster than you're losing it. And at right. uh, some point that's one I want to bring back. I did that make, I did make that for uh, another campaign, but I think actually fleshing that out and going through the drama of it all, it all and like, there's so much things to rip from because like you're an angel you're a blood warlock you're a warlock like that just lends itself to so much dynamics that i feel like you can go really deep and like really like wrench down on like the the drama and the emotions there so you're playing a warlock on let's get wild mount aren't you i'm trying to remember right because i know that's a blood show. cleric oh that's it's a blood that's a blood cleric yes yeah. of course how could i forget blood cleric. yes fun times mm -hmm. uh yeah there's it's there's so much fun dark stuff there there's almost too many subclasses no there's not it, it's it's D, D just trying to you know give you more and more ways to customize and have fun mm -hmm. with and there's it, it's it used to it feels like tv stations it used to be possible to be familiar with all the subclasses and now you're like what's that what? circle of the stars druid haven't even looked at it no <laughs> yeah. idea what it does mm -hmm, mm -hmm. constellation <laughs> like I could DM a, oh, that's right. God, I could DM someone who's like, I'm a circle of stars cleric, and they could just be making up powers. And I'm like, sure, that sounds right. <laughs> that works. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Checks I'm not out. gonna look that up. <laughs> Checks out. Checks out. <laughs> sounds right to me. Yeah. Well, I, that's a lot of where my NPCs come from are PCs that I've created that I was like, that's cool. a problematic PC. Can't do that. <laughs> 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 so you you give them a, a a really bad flaw and they become PBEGs. That's um that's what uh, <laughs> Breach Hard Blaze. That's what Breach Hard Blaze was. Breach Hard Blaze <laughs> is supposed to be uh, more of a Wild Western hero who gets mm. into uh, some bad things because it's the Wild West uh, and then tries to make up for it. Uh, yeah, but you know, Jefflin. Uh, I see. A, I know. I got a question earlier from somebody about Jefflin's voice. Oh, from Whisper Josephine. How did you come up with the voice for Jefflin? <laughs> did you mean to do it to, to sound a little like Kermit the Frog? Okay. <laughs> here is I, I. As I gave away at the end of the second session, Jefflin is an ancestor of Jorals. Uh, Jefflin and Joral are related. Uh, they are of the same bloodline. So once we decided to do that, uh, I once I had, it was actually my wife had the idea. She's like, you should do someone who's really, if, if it's a thousand years in the past, they should be related to Joral. And I was Try like, it. okay. Uh, and it was, and I thought it was a fun way to continue to b build out Ein and connect things back to the dungeon run w world and everything. And it's the first artificer I've ever played. It was a lot of fun, but wow, there's a lot to juggle with artificers. Mm -hmm. And Literally, then I gave you more you gave me even more and 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 i didn't get to do half of it i didn't even get to do the little eldritch cannon never happened know, yeah. you know and it well it's fine it's you know it, it it's the nature of the beast um but it was it was sort of fun and, and 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 i do like artificers but and i think i could see myself playing one in a longer campaign just because they but there's a lot to juggle with them um the voice specifically i i tried to find a voice that was reminiscent of Joral in that he was gregarious and pleasant and there was something there was something sort of immediate immediately like non-threatening about him <laughs> but I didn't want to sound too much like Joral I did not want to give it away immediately so I just tried to find something 
And then, then the more I kept playing him, I just kept, I was like, oh, he's just a, he's a nervous Nelly. Or I, <laughs> I think even Michael, you said he's the people of the party, uh, yeah. which, which just happened. That's just, that was one of those things that just happened in the moment where I was like, yeah, he's knitting. <laughs> Oh, that, yeah. that was did not plan did not plan him to be a knitter at all until until the moment of like you guys are playing cards i'm over here making fingerless gloves don't worry about me mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and that was that was again just finding the fun dynamic chemistry of the group it was like you guys are the doers i'm over here don't worry about me i'll, I'll take care of it <laughs> Well, um, we, uh, you weren't the only artificer in the game who never got to use any of their abilities. So was Granger Grish. So, uh, oh. in fact, the same artificer type. Yeah. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh huh. And there was I had... so much that we didn't get to get to between Jeff <laughs> yeah. Lynn and Granger Grish. Yeah. But yeah. yes. Well, and yeah. and it's speaking of backstories. It's... <laughs> So Michael, Michael had a had a beautiful, tragic, you know, like very interesting matron backstory for for Ambrose. Uh, Ron, let's let's tell. I mean, we got into it a little bit in the game, but Jeff Lynn's yeah. backstory was that he had invented a small pocket toaster called the Little Sizzler. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which did. was which was then turned into it turned into a weapon of destruction. Well, and you had met, you had made it very uh, clear that 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 uh, Jevlin didn't know who had caused the problem, Correct. yeah, uh, and which in, introduced an interesting problem for me to solve because it's like, well, you've already got it to market and it's working, and then it doesn't. So what do I have to do? And I was like, well, it's the Wild West, and we've already introduced a corporation, so I guess we're going to have shell corporations, <laughs> and one of them is going to be owned by Granger Grish, and it's, it's all very that. complicated. Yeah, it was very complicated for that. Well, I mean, artificers, man. You know, right. they, they don't no. go. They don't go straight for the throat. No, for sure. They, <laughs> they look for sabotage. something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Whisper yep. Josephine calls it the Joral Foreman Grill. That's incredible. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well done. Now we have to have a merch item that is the Joral Foreman Grill. <laughs> the yeah. Joral Foreman Grill. It, it magic. It's a magic item you can put in the you know the actual dungeon run. That at some point someone's like, "Who made this?" It's like we don't know. It's just we've no always been, been around this. for. Thousands of years. It's a magic item. You put any sort of food item in it, and you just you just you grill find it. A dragon's hoard. You find gems and gold coins, and somehow and then... it makes it really much healthier to eat because it just shivs away all the fat. And yep. you find also a small panini press. <laughs> there it is. What is it? Which I mean, it was basically what I was saying. I'm like, honestly, this would be a fairly simple enchanted item to make. It is a small, like, metal rack that is enchanted with like a low level heat metal spell, mm -hmm. which is what a second level spell. Yeah. I mean, it's you technically could take this into your home games, folks. Go ahead and make yourself a little toaster a little or toast. whatever. You know, basically, it's literally just a small metal rack that you then get it. You take to the nearest enchanter uh, and have them turn it into have them cast heat metal on it constantly. <laughs> Yes, yep. it, it shivs the fat. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said shivs the fat instead of trims the fat. I'm keeping sure. it. I'm using it from now on. Use it shivs yeah. the fat right away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. No, yeah. It's, uh, it, it was, it was so much fun. And there was, and yeah, as, as I was saying, we were just sort of scratching the surface with things. Um, I know that we've got so much more planned. Um, but I, I, and I know we've talked about our schedule and everything else like this, and and we are going to continue to do more two shots or or special games or anything like that because we are going to be, um, we were just talking about this. Uh, we we are going to continue dungeon run for a long time, but it is also something that we're going to have to be managing our schedules very carefully. And yes. so we are going to be taking kind of regular little breaks for two shots or little side things or anything like that, um, because. Putting the show on just just the group of us is it's hard work and we want to keep doing we love doing it for you guys but also managing burnout managing everything like that there is a level I think that's become more of the conversation of burnout possibly like with the pandemic and everything like that everybody's realizing it's like hey we're all pushing ourselves really hard yeah. um, and we want to keep doing the show and doing this doing it well for you um, so and offering is, you more entertainment right not just sure. one one through line of entertainment there's a lot of that's why we have arcane artistry uh, yeah. starting to ramp up that's well, that's why we're trying to do a lot of these different things is to offer yeah. you a, a, a diverse uh, yeah. entertainment option 
Yeah, and I think, uh, and I'm uh, seeing seeing some of the comments. Whisper Josephine says it's like a palate cleanser and loving the sideshows. And I think that's really, I think that's a great way to look at it. And and I, and it's also a way to bring in awesome people like Michael and Erica and and Trisha. We finally got to play with Trisha Hirschberger yeah. and yeah. you know and stuff like that because sometimes we've talked about trying to have guests on on the, in the actual main dungeon run show, and and we're never going to rule that out. I think we would love to try to in the near future, but also it's really hard. And I'm sure other shows can speak to this. It's hard when you are working out like such a, a strong narrative like we have on TDR, where it's like you're going to go and just bring in a side character for like an episode or two episodes. It's a hard thing to work around. So it's it's been it's it's like juggling 10 things at once yeah. a little bit. And so what's often easier for us with guests is is to do these side adventures and just have them come in. Um, otherwise, uh, otherwise, so they don't feel too railroaded or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But having well, said that, yeah, a lot of it is also like um, bringing one character who doesn't have a whole lot of backstory into a story that has hours of it, hundreds of hours of it, uh, is a lot of pressure on that guest. Uh, uh, you have to appear all of a sudden. You have to appear like you've been on this show for hundreds of hours and have a very full, fleshed out background, and that can be a lot of um, upfront work that you don't want to necessarily put on a guest because then you won't have more guests. <laughs> But we're never. I'm never going to rule it yeah. out, and I yeah, and, it, and it. I think it will. It it will happen. But yes, this is your fun. invitation for me. Yeah, you got it. I'll do it. I'll I'm do, in, I'll do the I'm research. In, yeah, give, give me time. <laughs> give me time. I'm gonna work on it. Um, <laughs> it <laughs> you're gonna play a lore masters. You have to know everything. No, I'm kidding. Perfect. <laughs> I would never ask you. Uh, no, I I find in other shows that we do bring guests in. Like the the best way we've seen to implement it is like it is a little bit railroady, but you you bring that character in as their background is like to kind of help guide the players towards something that they need to get to right or xyz and that's usually like the best way to float make that flow but it, yeah. it does it doesn't it does and doesn't give depending on the player like give them as much freedom as they would like but it's also still kind of nice because then it i feel like fans attach themselves to those characters included because they were so pivotal in getting the team or squad uh to a place they need to go and it, it kind of is just a little nice touch so it's like on TV series like bottle episodes, you know, where where what they call bottle episodes, where you it's like a perfectly encapsulated like um, side thing in, in like an in, in one session or two sessions or something like that. And that can be tricky to do sometimes, but also really fun. Um, and yeah, it's it's something we're working on. Uh, but yes, uh, for sure. And I, and I think also in the side quest, I think continuing to build out the the realm of, of build out our world and continuing to build out the realm of iron and i know other shows have done this too when you when you just i mean well and and let's get wild mount's a perfect example of like you know set in exandria set in the world that created by critical role is just can everybody's adding like little bits of of lore to you know to other adventures and it's and it's one of the cool things really fun to do well, and that's one thing I need to say out loud right now. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you're watching uh, or if you're watching this live or later, but thank you very much for trusting some background <laughs> with me because that was incredible to do. And yeah. um, it shows it shows how wonderful you are super as a cool. DM. So thank you. Super cool. Um, but yes, and so now all all of that's all of it's canon now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Um, but yeah, I know we'll, we'll, but before, you know, in, but before we're done, we will talk a little bit of episode 101, uh, for sure. Cause that is coming next week. We're super excited, but I mean, but Michael also, I mean, we, while, while we've got you, I mean, let's, do you want to get a little magic, the gathering talk? I mean, I know, <laughs> I know you, you were playing some this weekend or anything like that, or, or weren't, uh, there was, uh, you, you were just on another show or something like that. It, it's, you know, what is, how long have you been doing that? Like, you know, it, cause it, 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 to be honest, it is a part of my nerddom that I am, I am woefully underrepresented. I, I don't have much on. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, I've been playing since 20, I believe 2018, maybe 2018. Cool. So fair, fairly, fairly recent for you. Yeah. I'm fairly new, uh, compared to lots of other players, but I, I've been going hard in the paint and then like, yeah, I was in the, uh, in the command zone game nights with uh awesome. jimmy wong josh lee kwai uh a bunch of their uh staff members there and it was really cool and i was there with amy vorpal that's the we were both in the same episode for the D, &D set. i love amy uh and then i hate your deck uh is what i shot in la a couple months ago 
like two months ago maybe with joe mm-hmm. johnson who's on the orville um, oh great yeah 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 um so i did that and then i don't think i have anything other magic coming up i'm just doing more like tournaments and grinding and stuff on my own channel but i've <laughs> I've gotten more and more invested in magic and I'm going to continue. Do you have, so so you play it digitally as well as, as well as paper, as well as paper. Okay. Yeah. So I do both paper. I just got into modern, which is like an older format, way more expensive. Um, (laughs) And, uh, and then I play on arena. So, and then magic the gathering online, which is like an old Excel program, but. uh, Oh, wow. I'm grinding. I'm, I'm trying to get better. It's I don't know why I like what I I like it so much. I think it's because D and D fulfills like the creative, improv, acting side of things. And then yeah. uh, Commander is great and all because Commander is like a very social, fun game format. And if you want to play some casual magic, great. But I just do need to get some of that competitive, like sure. very, of course. Um, yeah, that very competitive, very uh, finessey kind of. Um, tactical kind of thing going on uh so that i can kind of fulfill that wizards and, tournament <laughs> yeah and, and not bring that to D because like yeah. i don't do that purposely in D because like i could like power game and like midnight right. but not everyone likes to see that and like sometimes i will turn that on when the stakes are there like that definitely shines or comes through when i'm playing in any campaign long form or short that like backs against the wall everyone's kind of like you know biffing it and xyz and then i just like snap it on and try and like make sure everything happens and we survive so but other than those moments like magic's great for that so i don't bring that like energy to D all the time yeah. that's a really interesting point i mean because yeah we do talk about that in the reverse so often where a D the the way to play it is to not play it as a game most of the time like mm-hmm. it, it's you know i i talk about this with new players before where it's like if you're just viewing it as a game then you'll have bad nights. And when you're just rolling dice and you can't roll dice well that night, then you'll, then you're just like, yeah, yeah, happens to all of us. Where, and you're just sort of like, oh, I sucked tonight. But if you actually play in D&D as just, just telling a story, then rolling bad is often like a gift, you know? Yeah. And it, it's, and so, but it is something, there is still that part of all of us, that competitive, that wanting to win type of nature sometimes that is a little, that, that does need to be fed every now and well, then. That's I mean, why that's, we have that's yeah. why we have critical failures and critical uh, successes is because For there's sure. that that feeling a need of like oh I won the roll yeah. or I lost mm-hmm. the roll. Yeah. So it's definitely but that, still but makes that's, it in. That's straight up competitive, just kind of you know just wanting to like head to head. That that fun thing can be can be a lot of fun sometimes, and I think is is definitely a, yeah it's something that that is still needed in gaming. For yeah, sure, it's just sure. not not always. You're right. I I play D and D so much as like a role play storytelling, you know, narrative type of thing. Where don't get me wrong. I mean, you can you can, you all can probably tell the moments in fights when I'm like really into it and going like, uh, yeah, I, I throw myself into that fight and you know blow myself up with a fireball and an <laughs> exploding ring, you know, or something like that. Um, and I, that feels good. That feels feels like I'm in a basketball game or something in that moment. Sure. But uh, yeah, it, it is. It is getting different things out of different games is is really kind of fun and cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also did something really cool last week for Veterans Day, right? As as uh, you did it, was it a one on one D and D session? Was that what you were telling me? Yeah, that was really unique. Um, it was a one on one session. Jeez, uh, my brain. I'm I'm so fried. I told them what I, I've done this whole week and last. Michael's week moving. Week. He's also <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I, like I, I, I was studying in, this in school. Yes, uh, yeah. I, it's yeah but uh yeah i was doing a one shot with another dm uh fantastic dm and uh it's like a supposed to be the tenacious d type of storyline but like converted to D. &D. amazing um and it's supposed to be more rock oriented but like i had so much things going on i couldn't really get in the rock zone i (laughs) my teenage years was a lot of rock music a lot of rock concerts mosh pits walls of death like i literally like i sure no poser here like i've done my fair share of, of like heavy hard rock concerts um but are you i didn't singer I was... at all michael huh are you a singer at all uh yes but uh i don't do it any in any profession <laughs> okay anymore. This is... got it 
and I, I do acknowledge that I have an above <laughs> average voice, but that's that's as far as that gets. It's, okay. it's enough to be pleasant so people don't say shut up. So same, um, same. I can yeah. hold a note. I can hold a note. I am not a trained singer in any right, way. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was it. Uh, it was supposed to be played like I was getting to a, a rock kind of dynamic where obviously Tanisha D is all rock and stuff, but I brought a character that was more about the funk and uh, his name was Sugar Meat Jack. Um, and it's kind of like that old school 70s to 90s r&b type of feel where he was Amazing. just like that's right we talked about that. yeah so that's that, that was really fun and then i had vampire the masquerade on friday with critical Ooh. bard prince uh latia and uh um, amazing I forget the other person but yeah um just man i just i've been i've been go i've been going through it <laughs> <laughs> for real keep it busy no that's yeah, great absolutely yeah mm -hmm. uh that that is really exciting we have a and question so uh, michael games. and uh feel oh, free sure. not to answer it if it's too personal but what are you in <laughs> school for oh it's deeply personal but i will answer it um <laughs> it's computer science and uh i don't know why i'm doing i do know why i'm doing it i just want to have a, a degree where it was completely outside from the range that i am used to and it was something that i never want growing up like for specific reasons i'm not going to get into this but like my intelligence is always questioned and it's something that I disliked a lot. So it's like, if I do computer science more likely, if someone's like, what degree do you have? Are you college educated X, Y, Z? I could just like flick them off and be like, I, I graduate computer science. Suck it. Or... Uh, we have a similar <laughs> situation in that, Michael, where uh, I did the same thing. I literally got two <laughs> degrees so I could tell people like, no, you can't dismiss me anymore. Exactly. Wow. Uh, and nothing quite with also magic and computer science nothing quite fuels a desire and motivation to get things done than things out of spite you know yep. uh, and it so, is a good motivator spite absolutely <laughs> that's how i've carried myself through it all so wow. spite, spite is great channel Fu correctly don't don't like correct yes people. yeah as as fuel yes that's right uh ogo's whole thing is channel anger properly i remember it can be used I remember used, that episode. That was like in the early episodes when yep. you found that out. Yeah. Yep. That is one of those things. It's why I love playing with new players sometimes and teaching new players the game of D and D specifically because everybody's experience are so different, um, but also what's universal it is is often it's just say you know or the ways that we connect with each other and the ways that like like for james i've said this many times james is incredibly personal to me and there there's incredibly specific stuff that i'm just like yeah this isn't even fantasy that's just therapy for me you know like moments like that and for a while i i just kind of had to trust that i'm like is anybody getting the is anybody gonna gonna know what this feels like because this feels so specific and so it was incredibly validating and wonderful when i i kept hearing more and more that people were like no i know exactly what that's like and uh that's one of the best things about storytelling and about performing and about role play is oftentimes i have found you will be rewarded for going more personal yep and, and you can and you and i'm not i'm not saying you have to um, offer up part like really deep personal parts of yourself you don't necessarily but but you know what's true and what is it good Corbin played confirmed MPB has killed someone <laughs> no I haven't <laughs> I have not killed a guard in the city of Turles that is not the personal part of James um no but uh it's it is that I'm not saying you need to overexpose yourself to people but but just trying to know you know what's real and you know what's true to you and feeling secure enough in yourself to share that because oftentimes that's the way to to tell people that they're not alone yep. and mm -hmm. and that's some of the most beautiful moments um with our community and with other storytellers and with everything like that where you're like i i was just guessing like you you know what that you really do know what that's like oh my goodness okay you know and that's i mean I, that's storytelling i think right morgan yeah. like that's one of the reasons why i got into it and why when i read aesop's fables uh you know when i was very young it, that got me into storytelling because i was like yeah. this is just you're passing down knowledge and i went hey i can relate to that crow i can relate to that fox like, why did nobody tell me this before now? You know, it's yeah. that kind of stuff for me um, yeah. where storytelling gives us an opportunity, uh, no matter who you are, 
uh, to share parts of yourself, your philosophies, your viewpoints, your your understandings, all of it um, in a in a way that's a little bit um, easier and uh, better for people to digest and, and understand in their own ways. So mm -hmm. I love that that's an aspect of what we do. And I hope that everyone who ever becomes a guest on this show continues to follow with that strong character choice and that like. Yeah put a little bit of what you know and what you're trying to say into the character that you're building. But I also, and that, and that's also the fun of bringing in new people who are, who are new to our space or, or sometimes new to gaming. And you're just sort of like, um, seeing the different perspectives that come in and seeing how they're the same and how they're different. You know, I, I certainly could never have played Ambrose, but, but also, you know, like the, the, the similarities between Ambrose and, and James or, or, or the things of Ambrose that, that felt very relatable and everything like that. It's like, that's, that's the beautiful part of, of empathy and of, and of showing each other, you know, like, even though it might look, look and sound and feel different, it's, it's all the same and it's all, and you should take comfort in that. Um, that's some of the, some of the stuff I love about it. And I, I love just kind of making the tapestry you know more like like it, it, making it a, a like making it more interesting is and building it out with more people is, is always so much so much fun and, and never not rewarding in my experience Absolutely. well and and I, you know what i love about guests is offering that viewpoint um mm -hmm. and that collectively when you bring a bunch of viewpoints together you learn new things yes yeah and that's what i love and that's yeah hugely why diversity is such an important aspect across the across all life uh, yeah. is because you learn so many things and you grow so yeah yep. for uh, sure quick, just quickly adding on to that like my Please. favorite when i dm i usually dm people and i want uh in my personal home games like i will and i haven't done it in a while but i'll have people type up like a page and uh sometimes i will ask players like hey i know you're kind of going through something or xyz i used to be a life coach i used to um just do a whole bunch of like you know I've, I've done a lot of learning on people myself uh just you know people who are marginalized so i always want to kind of like dig into some of that stuff mm -hmm. and bring those into games and so like one of my favorite things was helping someone through something traumatic that he went through and being able to confront that in game and then offering like a cathartic arc as something that also happened on the side and that was like one of the best storytelling slash dming experience i've ever had um and then mm -hmm. Someone in chat had a question about uh, just to quickly go into it. My favorite yeah. PC uh, is the great one I've ever great. played from Rabbit Attack. Oh, yeah, hit <laughs> yeah it. I'm on it. Um, uh, so personality and backstory. Uh, one of them, if you want to listen to it now, there's like I forgot how much episodes we have. I think we also released uh, not a hundred contiguous like on the same campaign, but there's a hundred stuff on on the podcast that have been released. So pro we're probably getting close to that 100 for Fate Forge Academy. Yes, and uh, it's a character called Besky Nevering, uh, and he is a also a warlock, a celestial warlock this time. So he's like he's a he's a good boy, um, <laughs> and uh, he is in a Feywild. He's in the Feywild uh, in a school uh, where they get to learn all these crafting things. He's a cook, but he's also like a descendant of like royalty uh, from like a just think of like a a very arcane, almost Wakanda esque, but more on the like cultural side and a lot more bright and fun than the Wakanda aspect. But amazing. My, he's my favorite character because we spoke about it earlier. It's like I always had to like make sure that people knew that I was intelligent or X, Y, Z and didn't have like the 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 uh, support I've had for my my family and stuff. Uh, so I had to do a lot of things for myself. And that mm -hmm. character has kind of the opposite going on. Obviously has his own personal challenges and stuff with his own family, but it's a character and he's like level eight or nine now, but it's the longest character I've ever had. And it's also like really different compared to anything I've ever played. And I'm playing like a kid. So it's like, wow, there's so much to do and so much to bring there that uh, that that probably is my favorite character if I have to think about it. It's it's so yeah, like when you think about putting yeah 100 episodes or, or you know, however many it's like however many hours you put into that. And it's just kind of I think it's hard not to, it's it's harder to not make a character more personal when you're spending that much time with them. Because I, I love my imagination. My imagination is a very powerful thing, you know, and everyone's is. But also it's like, but also like, 
I, it has to ring it like, you know, my, I, especially with D&D &D where you're reacting in the moment so often, if I have to go to my mind castle for every little decision of like, well, exactly how with this person, it's sort of like, no, it's, you know, I think you do have an instinctual yay or nay or what feels right or what doesn't to that person. Mm -hmm. And that is, yeah, I can, I can speak to that just feeling so invested in, in a character like that. Uh, I I need to catch up on Fae Forge. I gotta I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the, man. The quality that our our producer or our DM slash producer, he's both. Yeah. Uh, he's gotten like uh, one of our, my friends who I play Second Star to the right, Emily Urbellini, who's mm -hmm. in the what's that? Uh, the more free form, not like. Uh, oh, why can't I think about it? It's a, it's like D and D esque, but it's really just twenty side stories. 20 side okay. stories yeah so she's in 20 side stories and she's listened to our podcast and she says like our sound quality is like out of this world awesome. and steven also dms it i forgot what the point i was going to bring up <laughs> but uh yeah the the you were going to listen to it yeah the the quality of that that show has gotten so much better like he does this out of his house starting in his garage and like he still does it from home but the sound quality is like wild it's like mm -hmm. it, apparently it's like one of the top like sound quality podcasts out there so if y'all so want to check that out crazy that's, that's a thing that is great um well wow i mean we burned through an hour gentlemen yep. uh we yes, are we, we are we are coming to an end here um but let's also i want to i we have ron you and i have one question from david gen pro in the yes. patreon yes let's i go. saw that um specifically about 101 so all right um he says i've enjoyed the one in two shots but i want to return to ein Ron, will Ugo Truthseeker, War Chief of Thorn, need to check in with his people at some point? Of course he will. No, oh, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of <laughs> obvious. Of course he will. Uh, I think it's going to be more about well, how much information can the Truthseeker share? Uh, and I think once we actually have some more, con we have more information, but even more concrete information, then then I think we'll see hopefully with the help of James. Uh, well, I some, was going to say, yeah. And, and Michael, if you're not fully current, James is now, James now has, he's packed to the tome, but he, he now has a uh, far scribe. Uh, oh, and so good. Oh, I have that too. It's, it's, it's so good. It's well, it's because I, because I was basically becoming a sending machine and I'm like, there's no way I'm not taking this, <laughs> this invocation because yeah. I, and now it's just, and now I have like four people's and, names in and my book. Just texting. Mind. You're just texting. It's great. Just constant texting. <laughs> and, uh, and one or two of those people are related to, are related to Ugo's story about, about just keeping saying. the city of Thorns safe. So we've got some, we got some, uh, Cool. We, we're gonna need like a half hour in one episode where we're just gonna have a west wing episode that's yeah. all sending yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> what about dondo i know jafrigas absolutely i agree um yes uh, dondo we got to reach out to dondo for 100 percent. there's there's so much there's so many conversations we need to have yeah, i cannot wait are. for wednesday uh other side of david's question was has james thought of making a case to shothragot or sloppy goat that james is way more valuable to him as a member of the heroes of bingle rather than as a demon i think that is i think james has been banking on that i think i think james knows that's the only thing keeping him alive um at this point um if he's going to start being openly um conf confrontational with his patron um that they have they need him somehow mm -hmm. and he doesn't quite know how yet um but and so he he's testing the boundaries and sometimes getting zapped as a result um but i think you know i think he it's it's he has to limit his his direct asks though they obviously punished him for saying no to them and so you know but but i i think there's absolutely a good good point to your question of like but they it is to their benefit for him to stay in the, this position the crux of that or the the twist of that is is it bad to keep benefiting the old ones because mm -hmm. that is something we don't know is if james's patrons are really up to up to no good and maybe James should not let them keep having a piece of this. I'm so it is... excited for James. Dude. Good luck on your journey. Dude. 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 Yeah. Dude. 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 But dude. But dude. 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 Yeah. It's so much where it's like, it's, he, he's, 
he's playing chicken and yeah it, it's it's maybe it maybe they'll allow him to keep a al stay alive but also but also is it good that they are going to continue to gain power and continue to gain access through him does he want to keep does he keep wanting that door to go both ways because that might not be for the best of everyone either oh my god <laughs> there's anyway, so many things so, so many things many things mm -hmm. i and by the way what was what was lily's secret room i still have no idea what lily's secret room was at the end of last episode anyway okay so much to talk about and we can't because we have to go but we love you guys so much michael you're the best dude you are the best. um you're Thank awesome you. we're so happy to oh, have awesome. you awesome Thanks, man. And uh, we we are so Erica, excited. you're also the best. Thank you Erica, for, for yeah. joining also us. Also the best, Erica Fermina. We will see set, you Erica. both again. Absolutely. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Um, and um, but yeah, we will see you both soon. I hope. And oh, while we're sure. yes, absolutely. But meanwhile, um, yes, uh, at Michael Critz on Twitter, at Michael Critz here on your you do stuff on your on your own I Twitch do, do things here. on Twitch, and I definitely will when the semester is over because I don't Beautiful. know if I'll be going to school. Either. If you this ever BA need a, a guest, let me know, Michael. <laughs> I will I will do whatever you need me to do. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Please, awesome. But uh, but so much more cool stuff coming, and this has been the Dungeon Cooldown. Uh, have a wonderful week, you beautiful people. And uh, we will see you on Wednesday night for episode 101. And then the week after that, we again, remember, we are taking off because of Thanksgiving. But we will see you back here soon enough. Have an amazing week. Thank you again. Go to patreon.com slash the dungeon run. Anything I'm forgetting, Ron? I feel like I'm forgetting uh, something. No, keep, him, keep an eye on the merch store. New stuff coming keep for Christmas store. very soon. Merch. Store. We, did an, we did an impromptu like merch photo shoot the other day. Yeah. And there's all I'll photos. I'm excited for that. It's yes. Good. Yeah. Good stuff going. But um, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And as always, humankind. Be, be both. both. <laughs>